Henshin Inspection presents Going Ultra. This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Welcome to Going Ultra. Visit mjmunoz.com slash gu for notes and links, and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment to help me grow. SSSS.Denazanon, episode 8, which is entitled, What is This Wavering Emotion? Originally aired May 21st, 2021. The writer is Keiji Hasegawa. The director is Rei Owada. My title for this episode is, Anywhere is Fine. Getting right into the static. The moral clarity Knight has about destroying Kaiju is upsetting. Are they going to properly deal with this issue? I had no idea, I had no issue with it rather, in SSSS.Gridman, but the framing here changes everything. Moving on to the sizzle. Grid Knight using Dina Soldier as a rifle was dope. Even though I felt weird about them killing the Kaiju, it looked really cool. I mean, come on, I, I, I can't lie about that. Moving on to the soul section. Uh, Knight asked Yomogi to let him use him in a fight against the kaiju in order to kill it more effectively. Kaiju users, particularly, particularly, I've been having a lot of trouble with that word today, the kaiju eugenicists use kaiju as weapons to kill all humans. Yomogi had to choose to fire while Grid Knight was wielding him as a weapon. I wonder if kaiju operate under the same mechanism. Are they just doing what comes naturally or choosing under the guidance of the kaiju users? In a way, is Galma putting the other Denazanon pilots in the same situation where he is pointing them as weapons uh, towards an enemy and then forcing them to act. I don't know what you think about that. Moving on to the speculation. Chise is getting her own Dino Dragon mech. Uh, the fact that she, or sorry, <laughs> the fact that the seed in Yumogi's mind when he's doing the absence in um, domination uh, and the seed thing that Chise picked up in the first episode were shown to have grown and changed after Yumogi connected uh, with the kaiju as, you know, a kaiju user. Um, I believe that's all foreshadowing uh, that, oh, that a kaiju will be born from the Denazanon four and a half and maybe it will even be uh, the great dragon or a, a great dragon uh, that's growing with Chise because she resents being a fifth wheel. And I say that because she's piloted Dinah Soldier. I don't think she's piloted Dinah Wing. Oh, no, nah, I guess she has, hasn't she? Anyway, I don't remember, actually. Let me know in the comments, please. Uh, but, you know, the Nazanon has a big dragon. There's that dragon in the opening credits. You know, dragon things may be powerful. Her uh, little thing it has, like, the frame of dragon wings. They could be bat wings, but dragons do have bat-like wings. So, I don't know what's going to happen, but... Um, she could be like the, you know, the Drago Rex or whatever that Denazanon gets. That could be what's growing for her. Or maybe it's just her own mecha that integrates, like Dragon Caesar uh, from MMPR or, uh, you know, <laughs> Jew Ranger. Anyway, I don't know about that. Okay, moving on to the uh, final section. This is the debate section. Here's the big question, and I've got big, hairy context full of spoilers. So here we go. If kaiju are born from people, have hearts, and can be good or evil, what makes them so different from people? Why is it okay to just kill them at some point? And the reason I ask that is because uh, I would think in the Gridman universe that, you know, in general Tokusatsu, they're not cool with you just killing people if they're bad enough. But people are born from people, people have hearts, and people can be good or evil, just like kaiju. So what's the difference? Here's all the context for this question. Uh, <laughs> are you ready for those SSS.Gridman spoilers that I talked about last episode? If not, go mainline it and come back. It'll be worth the trip. Believe me. Spoiler, 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 dam. Okay, uh, I'm letting the waters out of the spoiler dam, so here we go. This was a great show, right? Anyway, uh, Knight and the second are from SSSSet.Gridman, as I'm sure you've gathered by now. Keichi Hasegawa is the head writer for both of these series in the Gridman universe. Knight is actually anti, and the second is the groovy, music-loving exposition hobo that talked to Hibiki on the train. Anosilis, or Anosius, I would say Sius because of my my, my Latin background. Uh, Anosius the second. Uh, the answer, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, that answers the question of what she's the second of, that they, you know, raised. And said, I'm the second of what? Anyway, um, so that was fun. Anyway, the two of them uh, are kaiju with hearts, right? Anti, an or, you know, knight and uh, the second, Anosius. Um, and yet, you know, despite the fact that they're kaiju with hearts, uh, Knight openly advocates for the killing of kaiju without hesitation. 
He said it multiple times to Yamogi. Uh, the second implicitly goes along with that because she has been supporting him all this time. It seems like it has been a few years since we've seen them because they look older. Uh, and I want to know, you know, why is that okay? And should people be killed if they cross that same threshold that kaiju do? My rating for this episode overall is 4 out of 5. Uh, <laughs> the reason I went, or, you know, I, I entitled this Anywhere is Fine. Uh, and I'll kind of explain that as I, I go through the episode. Uh, anywhere is fine as long as you have the right mindset. At the beginning of the episode, Minami and Yamogi were uncomfortable together. Uh, they had just gotten bad news, and when Yamogi tried to reach out to her, uh, she pulled away. The end was capped off by a mirror of that scene where he is aloof and she reaches out to him. There is warmth. There is a warmth and joy in that ending scene because something has changed within each of them. They are the same people, but their minds and hearts are changing. Additionally, the kaiju eugenicists were off having a fun day together, and they didn't affect the plot of the episode at all. Um, they were still a unit, they were still the same people, but they were taking a day off from their typical work. They allowed themselves to be in the moment and enjoy the creations of the humanity they wished to destroy. They were... They were still themselves, even though they were somewhere else. They were anywhere, and it was fine. They were still them, because wherever you go, there you are, and you're there with these other people. So, I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting. And that line caught my attention in the beginning of the episode, and its repetition at the end uh, really hooked me. It got me thinking about the following short verse of poetry, which I always mingle it in my mind, like, there is no prison uh, that a free mind can escape, or that can hold a free mind, or whatever. But the actual verse goes like this. Stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Minds innocent and quiet take that form, or that for, an hermitage. If I have freedom in my love and in my soul am free, angels alone that soar above enjoy such liberty. And that's from uh, Richard Lovelace to Althea from prison. I'm not familiar with the works of Richard Lovelace, but apparently that's one of them, and somehow... In my like public school teaching, uh, well, I, mean, I went to private school for a while too. That that eked in there somehow. I don't I don't know quite where, what teacher decided to go rogue and, and give us that information. That inside of the prison of a school, that if your mind is free, you too will be free, uh, and your freedom will rival that of angels who fly in the heavens above and don't have the same worries and cares of man. Anyway, uh, this episode raised a lot of. I, I'm still justifying why I gave this a four out of five. This episode. Uh, this is what you tune into Going Ultra for, isn't it? This episode raised a lot of questions of identity and roles. Over this series, the heroes and villains have been purposely placed in opposite roles and have questioned their motivations and actions. The lines have been getting fuzzed, and I am enjoying the exercise in something close to character study that is happening here. Uh, Kuyomi was about to vandalize someone's property for no good reason. Then he supported letting the kaiju live because it had done no harm. Further, he put himself in danger to stop Galma from mindlessly causing damage to the city and, you know, people's lives, and uh, insisted on luring the kaiju away to mitigate harm. Uh, to, you know, and putting himself in danger, right? like I said. Uh, there's a lot of nuanced treatment of these people and their decisions, and I really dig that. So, that's all I have to say for now. Uh, that pretty much concludes the review, the analysis of uh, this episode of... Uh, SSSS.Dinazanon, and I would ask that you go ahead and go over to mjmonios.com, that you'd look for the search bar, you'd search for that search bar after you find it, type in Glowbug, and you can read uh, draft 1.9 of Ava and the Glowbug, which is the most up-to-date version of the story. I think that story's done. I actually started working on the second book in the Glowbug series. I plan on there being one about, one inspired, loosely, by Ultraman, by Kamen Rider, and then by Super Sentai. So, uh, I'm working on that. I've got plans. Uh, my wife helped me out. Um, I did some brainstorming. I told her about that, and she added some ideas. So, anyway, I think I've got some fun ideas, and I hope you check that out and then stick around for others. And if you're a tokusatsu fan and an artist, uh, contact me, please, because I would love to find a tokusatsu fan to do my art. Um, yeah. So, with that, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to remind you that you don't have to shout henshin to be a hero. And I'm going to leave you with peace and blessings. This is MJ signing out.